Hi, today I'm talking to Burke and I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is Burke. Uh, I'm a 2020 uh, May uh, UBC graduate in electrical engineering. And yeah, I, I guess I, I work <laughs> I work as an electrical engineer at C-SPAN, Vancouver Shipyards. Okay, cool. So what would you say are some types of projects you work on then at uh, your company? Okay, uh, so in 2013, Canada announced something called uh, National Shipbuilding Strategy. Uh, and C-SPAN got a bunch of projects uh, in uh, through uh, Royal Canadian Navy and Coast Guards. So currently we're building projects uh, like Navy ships, Coast Guard ships for them. That's awesome. Um, in those types of ships then, what's your role? Like what kind of, like what do you kind of work on in those big projects? Uh, so the current ship that we're building, uh, I joined the company uh, late in the build phase, well, late, late design phase to early build phase. Uh, so I had a chance to touch a certain systems uh, that I can't actually talk about right now, but, uh, but yeah, oh, sorry, can you repeat that question again? Yeah, of course, just like, what's kind of your role? Like, what does an average day look like for you on this project? Uh, so um, the initial phase of the project, we had some requirements uh, set by the government, uh, such as like the ship must have this system operating in a certain way. And then we have to make sure that we actually have those and supply enough power, uh, have uh, like a required transformer and uh, UPS uh, emergency power available in case something happens. Uh, or uh, certain information has to be shielded, not basically in case some other uh, enemy ship tries to access the information. Yeah, stuff like that. Okay, cool then. So it sounds like you probably have a bit of coding in there as well. Is that kind of right? Um, so in my role, I don't necessarily need to uh, do software, but it definitely helps. It, make, it makes my life easier. Uh, to have some software background knowledge. Okay, do you know what softwares those would be? Um, well, it will be. It could be as simple as VBA, like Excel VBA. Uh, it could go up to maybe like C or C++. Okay, cool. So what would you say then are some pros and cons you've experienced by choosing electrical engineering as a career path? Um, I think uh, one of the biggest pros for me is that uh, how I see it doesn't matter which industry you work in or uh, what sort of job you're doing. Um, as long as it's something about like uh, technology or manufacturing, you need to have electrical engineering component in it. So uh, in a way, uh, because of how technology is developing, you like I, I can easily find a job uh, is uh, one of the biggest aspects and uh, the fact that uh, the fact is, I can actually uh, seeing new developments happening constantly, and uh, I'm involved in the process is what I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah. And one of one of the biggest cons, I guess, uh, I can't really say it as a con, but because my my focus is mostly power. Uh, a lot of my friends who chose electrical engineering went the software path. And uh, now that I chose power, uh, I guess you could say uh, it's a little late to go to software path. Um, yeah, may maybe that could be the only con. I can't really think of anything else right now. Okay, yeah, that's, that's actually pretty insightful information. When you're in your electrical engineering degree, how much of it would you say is split between stuff like power and then software? Um, honestly, the power side, um, it only, it, um, there is almost no power side included in the uh, electrical engineering degree in UBC. There is electives that you can take in the fourth year, um, starting with power electronics and power systems analysis one and two. Uh, those would be the, the most major courses, I guess. Uh, but besides that, uh, it's more, more like circuit oriented and software oriented. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. What would you, what, what type of advice would you give to students then who are considering electrical engineering as a career? Um, 
I would say uh, electrical engineering, uh, I think it's, it's really hard to complete a degree in electrical engineering uh, if you're not actually passionate about it. Uh, I guess that goes for a, other <laughs> engineering disciplines as well, because uh, it, it really takes a toll on you and uh, you, you have to actually like study the material and uh, engineering is uh, constantly improving like every day, new stuff is coming out and you gotta actually uh, watch news, like read news and uh, follow what companies are doing, uh, what new innovations. So if you're into that, you should like not even think about it twice. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, awesome. So one final question for you then today. What is something that you started or what is something that after you started working kind of surprised you about the industry compared to when you're in school, what your expectations were? Um, so when, when I first got my job offer, I thought like, wow, like defense industry, that's, that's really cool. Uh, but it doesn't obviously like look like that. And um, one, one thing to watch out for is that uh, sometimes people just sound very knowledgeable, people with like a lot of experience, but um, uh, what I would say is that in big, big companies, people don't really get exposure to different aspects of the, of the job. They keep doing the same thing for years and they don't really learn about, uh, like they don't really see the big picture. So I would definitely recommend people to, um, learn the fundamentals in a smaller company, get to work on different, uh, different sides of a certain project and then once they discover what they're really interested in, uh, maybe try a bigger company. Yeah, I've heard that exact same advice from a ton of engineers I've spoken to. They all recommend starting at a smaller company so you can really get a lot of breadth of experience rather than being very specialized in one area and maybe yeah, not knowing how much definitely. about others. Okay, cool. Well, that's all the questions I had for you today. I'd like to thank you for taking the time. A lot yeah, of people no are really going to take a lot of value from this.